Okay, hello and welcome. This is the webinar on how to host a CD Saturday. So a CD Saturday is um, not a new phenomenon, but it's fairly new to New Brunswick. There were a few that were organized last year and there's interest in being able to hold more CD Saturdays around the province. So we're delighted to have two presenters with us today who are willing to share their experiences of hosting CD Saturdays last year. Um, so um, before we get into that, um, I wanna introduce myself. So my name is Laura Rainsborough and I'm the network director for the New Brunswick Food Security Action Network. So this is a network where our mission, our vision is of a New Brunswick that is informed, connected and engaged in food security for all. So we operate kind of as that container for um, ideas, resources, actions on food security in New Brunswick. Um, we have a newsletter that is sent out monthly and that's a great way to stay involved with what we're doing. Um, and we also tend to hold a conference provincially every couple of years. Um, the last couple of years we paused on that and had a whole project called Everybody Eats. Um, where we tried to take the pulse on food security in New Brunswick at this moment and see where we can find alignment on the issues that we're working on, as food security is quite a complex concept in and of itself. So um, we also hold webinars like this to be able to keep up to date on what people are working on around the province so that one corner of the province can learn from another. So today we're really excited to have two different organizations presenting on the work that they've done. Um, before I get started, um, I'm gonna ask that uh, participants uh, mute themselves um, and uh, that will reduce some of the background noise. And um, then it will be a bit easier with the connections to hear from our presenters. Great, so, um, what is a CD Saturday? That will be part of what you'll hear about. Um, but there are two other organizations that sort of help to encourage more CD Saturdays to happen. I want to spend a little bit of time to introduce those other organizations. One is ACORN, the Atlantic Canadian Organic Regional Network. And since 2013, ACORN has been working to strengthen the organic seed movement in uh, the organic seed sector in the Atlantic provinces. So they are also helping specific initiatives like CD Saturdays and seed libraries. And we're seeing more and more community seed libraries um, popping up around New Brunswick. Um, since 2017, ACORN has had a community seed network that they helped to launch. So this is a bilingual online platform um, for, uh, for more community involvement in SEEDS. Uh, membership is free and they encourage anybody and everybody to become involved. So I'll um, see about adding some of those resources onto the chat box so that everybody has that to share. I also want to highlight um, Seeds of Diversity Canada. So this is a national organization um, that for 20 years has been helping CD Saturdays happen across the country. Uh, Judy Newman is the CD Saturday coordinator with Seeds of Diversity Canada. She had hoped to be here on this call with us today, um, but instead she passed along some of her top advice on uh, hosting CD Saturday. So after the presenters have shared their, um, their um, tips and tricks, then I'll be sharing Judy's top three points of advice. Um, she invited people to contact her directly by emailing mail, M-A-I-L, at seeds.ca. Um, and their website, Seeds of Diversity Canada, which is seeds.ca, has a plethora of resources as well. Um, there's even on there a how to host or organize a CD Saturday. So I'm going to try to pop some of those links into the chat box so you have those available. Um, but without further ado, I'd like to introduce our speakers for today. So uh, coming up first will be a presentation by Tatum Andrews. So Tatum is the program coordinator with Foods of the Fundy Valley. Foods of the Fundy Valley is a nonprofit organization based in rural Albert County, New Brunswick. 
with a focus on food security, Foods of the Fundy Valley's vision is a stronger, more vibrant Albert County where our residents can enjoy the economic, healthful, and cultural benefits of consuming locally produced foods. And our farmers and food producers are able to sustainably, responsibly, and profitably grow the local food economy. Through education, innovation, and strengthening of community ties, Foods of the Fundy Valley hopes to foster an environment that promotes the production and consumption of local goods in the Albert County area. So with that ambitious vision, they achieve that through a number of different activities. Um, and I think a pretty new one is in hosting a CD Saturday. So I'm gonna hand it over to Tatum to tell us all about how Foods of the Fundy Valley has organized a CD Saturday. Tatum? All right, thanks, Laura. So I'm just gonna share my presentation here. All right. And so, yes, last year was our first CD Saturday, hosted by Foods of the Windy Valley. So I just uh, did a list of things that we had to consider and things that I found important when we started our planning. So, of course, you need to pick a location. Vendors, if you decide to have vendors at the event. A seed swap table. Workshops, if you decide to have workshops. And advertising was definitely an important one. And then food. So we're gonna go in depth into those items. So for location, one thing we considered was price. So the locations we were looking at, there were price involved. So we had to make sure that that was something in our budget, that it was easily accessible by the public. So Food of the Fundy Valley, the area that we cover goes from Alma to Hillsboro. So we wanted to think of a location where we would have the most people able to attend easily. So almost not that populated, especially in the winter time. So we had to consider those factors. Uh, and then we wanted to make sure it was able to accommodate what we wanted to do. So we wanted to offer food, we wanted to offer workshops, and we wanted to have vendors. So we needed to make sure that the location was large enough for that. And if we could get separate rooms for the workshops, that was a bonus. And then parking, because you know parking is can always be an issue depending on where you are uh, and you want it to be accessible to the most amount of people. So those were the main things with location. And so we ended up choosing the Hillsboro School, which provided us with a cafeteria for our food, a separate auditorium, it was an awesome workshop space uh, for the workshops, and then a nice area for the vendors. So it was actually a really great location. This year we're switching to the, where we have the Hillsboro Farmer's Market. So we couldn't use that location previously because there wasn't enough heat. The section that they used for the Farmer's Market wasn't heated. This year we've upgraded that area. So we're holding it there just because it's familiar. That's where we have our Farmer's Market every, every Saturday. So, so we're moving locations. Right, and then for vendors, if you choose to have vendors, which we really thought added to the CD Saturday, it you know provides a place for vendors to sell some of their wares during the winter months, which isn't always something that they have available to them, and they're able to provide lots of information. And you know, people were getting helpful hints when they were talking to them about how to grow the seeds that they're purchasing, and it's nice to be able to highlight places that are actually growing the plants and saving the seeds. So, so we tried to find seed companies, especially local to New Brunswick, obviously, and uh, we had one come from Nova Scotia, so that was great. Uh, anything garden related, so we had some uh, people that sold different garden tools and even people that just sold like garden aprons to wear, so it could be anything like that. Farms, nurseries, and greenhouses, of course, so we had uh, Farmer Browns came and they had plants to sell, so that was great. And some farms selling even some of the root crops that they still had available. And then we uh, reached out to local businesses that use plants or any types of seeds in their products. So um, there's some companies that use, you know, medicinal herbs to make products and things like that. So included them and they had teas and that kind of thing. 
And then we did reach out to some nature groups. We didn't have very many attend that uh, at our first one, so we're hoping this year we can reach out to more and get some more people there. And then uh, local libraries, I have that listed because this year, last year we didn't have anyone from a local library, but this year the Hillsborough Library is coming because they have a seed bank, seed library. So we're hoping that they can teach people how to use that and, and get them more involved. So, I mean, your vendors could range from any type, but these are the ones that we can try to focus on. And then many of you may know what a seed swap table is, but if not, I just thought I'd quickly go over that. So it's basically where people bring seeds to swap them. It's basically the whole idea of a seedy Saturday. So it's a free exchange to allow gardeners uh, to swap seeds with others in the community. And I find it's a good way to find unusual seeds that you may not see in other places or something that you haven't grown before. Uh, it is important if you're asking people to bring seeds to the free seed swap table that they label the seeds with the name of the plant, when they harvested them, and if they will, what they like and dislike about the seed or the plant, any kind of growing recommendations. We didn't emphasize that last year, so there were some that just had the name on and it's really important if we have the date and things like that. And we also got for our seed swap table some seed catalogs from different companies uh, like Richter's and Johnny's and Betsy's, lots of different ones and they're always happy to send lots of catalogs so it was all we did was I went to the website and usually they had a contact form or a phone number and I would just call them and they were very happy to send catalogs and then some of them even said they would donate seeds to the seed swap table so hope seeds sent lots of catalogs but they also sent a lot of different seeds and incredible seeds other in nova scotia but they don't have a printed catalog they just use online to sell other seeds but they sent us some seeds as well so sometimes you get lucky and you get catalogs and seeds the only issue i found we had with the seed swap table is that People didn't know, like they didn't understand what the concept was. So they felt like if they didn't have seeds to contribute, they couldn't, they didn't feel comfortable taking seeds from the table. And then we had one person that was a vendor who also didn't really understand what the seed swap table was and she was right next to it. And she was kind of policing it a little too much. So that became an issue because we had so many seeds and we wanted people to take them. and if you don't have seeds and you still want, like we wanted people to take them whether they could contribute or not and then she was kind of telling people they could only take one package so we have a little bit more education we need to get out about what actually a seed swap table is and make people feel more comfortable so this year i think we're going to have someone hopefully behind it kind of manning it a little bit more throughout the event or have someone like myself have a table next to it or one of the other organizers uh, to be next to it so it'll be run a little bit more smoothly. But we also got some items from Acorn, some uh, buttons like you put on your jacket and some cool seed saving information that we put on that table as well. All right, and then for workshops, we wanted to keep them related to topics like seed saving, seed starting, uh, gardening, that kind of thing. We first asked vendors if they wanted to present especially ones that do a lot of you know, farming and that kind of thing. And that worked out great. We, we filled up the space, our spaces pretty quickly. We let them have about 30 to 45 minutes. And like I mentioned before, they were in a separate room than the vendors, which was great because then it, you know, there wasn't any distraction. People were there just to listen to the, the workshop and then they could go and talk to the vendors after. So this year, so last year we had workshops throughout the whole day, but this year we're changing the format a little bit. So we're just going to have three, I think, workshops in the morning, and then we're going to have a screening of a seed documentary in the afternoon. So I, I kind of, I should have put the name of the documentary in there. Now I'm blanking on it, but it's something about seeds. It's it's a newer release, or it's just coming out, or something. So we'll see how that goes. I think that'll be interesting for sure. Uh, and then as far as advertising goes, so of course we all use Facebook or some, most people use Facebook or have access to it. So we definitely created a Facebook event. And in there we posted information about all the vendors. So 
every day leading up to it, depending on how many vendors we had, kind of gauged how much time I had. And then every day I would put in information about the vendor, which I basically just took from their website and then listed their website as well. And then I did separate postings about all the workshop presenters leading up to the event. So that kind of created a little bit of buzz. And then anyone who had uh, said they were going or were interested, they were getting information about all the vendors, you know, every day. Well, if they were looking at Facebook, I guess. We also have a uh, newsletter list. So I emailed the information out to everyone in the newsletter list. And then we shared it to lots of different Facebook group pages, you know, ones that are focused on gardening in the, air, you know, Moncton area people that were in close proximity to Hillsborough are close enough. Uh, and you know, there's like a gardener's Facebook group and wild crafting and things like that. So we shared it to those. And then of course we shared it to Acorn and food, New Brunswick Food Security and those types of places, to hopefully for them to include them in their newsletter. Uh, we put local town calendars that are on their websites, we put it in there, or any other newsletters that we could think of in the area. And as Laura mentioned, Seeds of Diversity, so they have an event, uh, or put the link there for their event page, and you can just email, and they'll put it on their page. And there's so many, if you look at the page, there's so many CD Saturdays across the country. It's really amazing. And so the only issue I found last year, kind of with that kind of ties into the advertising is that we're doing this in the winter months so there's going to be snow or weather events that could happen and that happened to us last year so we had to change the date and we so the you know the day before we had to make a decision and we didn't have a snow date we had didn't already determine a snow date so it kind of was a little bit of an issue because we had all these people that were going or excited about the event and then when we had to cancel it we couldn't even tell them that oh it's going to be this date or they couldn't have already kind of had it in their mind well if there's a snowstorm it'll be this next date and then because New Brunswick is so large and the weather can be different in different areas you know it was kind of snowing where we were but then in other areas it wasn't bad so some people actually even still came to the event and then they were really disappointed and didn't know what was going on because it wasn't happening. So I think our attendance was a little bit lower when we had it on the new date, just because it was hard to communicate. I mean, we put it, you know, on our Facebook event page and tried to and send out newsletters, but it still, you know, caused a little issue, I think. So this year we're definitely making a snow date. So I kind of would recommend that if you want things to go a couple bit smoother. Because Snow can happen at any time. All right, and the last thing I put here is food, uh, mainly because the food provided us with enough money to pay for the rental of the school. So Foods of the Funny Valley provides soup bars, provided a soup bar at the event, and we often do soup bars at different events. So uh, there was a some of the like Christmas in the country farmers market that we do, we have soup bar there. It's kind of a fundraising for us. So different events, we have the soup bar. So we have the soup bar at the CD Saturday. And then, like I said, the money from the soup bar helped pay, for, will pay for the whole rental of the school. And then we have some extra leftover, which was nice. We did provide the food from 1130 to three, but it seemed like a really long stretch for someone to be with the food because you know with a super someone has to be there and kind of tell people where to get the food and make sure it's still warm and then we have rolls and desserts so someone had to be there with the food for that length of time and it just seemed like too long so this year we're just going to have a specific lunch break and then the soup will be available during that time and then that's it so it won't be for the whole day and of course if you're having food you need to make sure you have space for people to eat it so you have to make sure you have tables or something and I would definitely recommend something simple to serve. So soup is pretty easy, uh, but you do have to make sure you have bowls and cutlery and things like that. And so tying it into the costing, the only cost we had was the rental of the school. There was no other costing. Um, so everything, you know, the seeds and everything were donated and the vendors didn't pay anything. So I guess I forgot to mention that, but we didn't charge anything for vendors to be there and everyone, uh, 
volunteered to do the workshop, so we didn't pay them for anything either. So, I mean, there may be different ways people do it where there are costs, but I guess we just have the school rental. So this year it'll be the same. We have to pay for the, the rental of the farmer's market location, and that will be all. So we're hoping to raise enough money through the super again to pay for the, the rental. And that's it, unless there's specific questions for me if we want to wait till the end. That's excellent. Thanks so much, Tatum. Um, so I'm going to just share a link in the chat box about uh, Foods of the Fendi Valley, just their website. So if anybody wants to follow up and find out more, um, I'll take a quick pause for any questions directly for Tatum. So I have a question. It's Michelle. Um, the timing of your event, like why is it important to host a CD Saturday or Sunday in the winter months? Like you said, the snow is an issue and that sort of thing. I know, like I know why we do it. I'm just curious why you choose, and your date is in February or March? Uh, we're doing, this year we're doing March 9th. March 9th. The last year, I think it was March 20 something. And then we didn't end up, because of the snow, we had to do it in April. Okay. Uh, 14th, so a little bit later. So for us, we do it, well, we decided to do it in March because there's, well, I am a farmer, and then the other lady that helps me organize, which I should give a shout out to her, Angela McDougall from Fundy Farms. Her and I do all the organizing, and she's a really big help because she's in the community, so she knows a lot of the people and gets the vendors. Uh, she's also a farmer, so we wanted to get it done in March because once April comes, we're really busy. And plus it gives people a chance to order, you know, go through the catalogs, order seeds, because quite often if you wait too long and you try to order seeds, they've already been, they're gone. You lose out on, on purchasing certain varieties of things. And, you know, people tend to plan, do their planning, I think anyway, in, you know, March into April. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much, Tatum. So um, stick around. We'll have more chance for questions and answers after Michelle's presentation. Um, so it's now my pleasure to introduce Michelle Davidson Legier, who's on the executive of Roots to Table. Um, so Roots to Table is a good food collective. Uh, as they say, it is our mission to eliminate hunger through action by sharing, training, teaching, and funding and by connecting growers to communities in the Northumberland region. So Michelle um, is uh, in her day job. She is the Community Inclusion Network Coordinator uh, for the North Northumberland region. And um, she also sits on the executive of Roots to Table and is formerly the Food Security Coordinator for Roots to Table. So she comes with a lot of experience and she's been quite involved with, um, with the CD Saturday that Roots to Table hosted last year. And just like Foods of the Fundy Valley is planning another one for this year. So Michelle, I'll hand it over to you. Awesome, thanks Laura. So um, yeah, last year we did our first CD Saturday in Miramichi and I didn't put together a nice slick presentation, but I'm kind of glad now because a lot of stuff that Tatum addressed in her, her presentation, um, we, we had the same kind of setup. So uh, I'm just going to start um, sharing my screen. I have uh, some photos and then I have a quick little video and hopefully it'll all make sense in the end. <laughs> Hang on a second. And I'm new to doing all this, so I did do a practice run earlier, but I just want to take a minute here. Okay, there we go. So everybody can see that, okay. So, um, like I said, we did our first uh, CD Saturdays and Sundays last year in the Miramichi region. So uh, the Northumberland County region is quite spread out. We are, um, the greater Miramichi has about 17,000 people, but beyond that we have a, about an hour away is Blackville, an hour away is Rogersville, another hour away is Bay St. Anne. So we do a lot of work across the county. So the greater Miramichi's CD Saturday really developed out of the, the interest of um, all of those regions, all those small communities, they really wanted to, uh, we really wanted to start off with um, our farmers, our, um, our partners at the library. So really, 
this, these are these seeds here that you're looking at are radish seeds. Um, they are they are grown on the um, Water Street Market, or sorry, Water Street Garlic and Greens farm, which is a micro farm, in, in right in the middle of the Miramichi. And uh, Matt invited me to his farm when I was still the food security coordinator, and said, you know, it'd be great to find a way to learn more about seed saving. He's an avid seed saver, him and his wife, and uh, and just to uh, be able to share how to grow, how to raise food uh, with all of our, um, with all of, all of across the region. Because uh, we're finding a lot of, um, oh, how do I explain it? It's, uh, it's just uh, a lot of people don't know how to grow food from scratch, from seed. Um, so our first step was actually in create, working with Acorn, Stephanie Hughes of Acorn, and saying, um, how do we, bring seed libraries to the Miramichi region. So um, she was really great. She, we did a lot of work with, uh, with her. Um, the Chatham Public Library in Miramichi, Jennifer's there, uh, was instrumental in, in launching um, our first seed library. Um, she did so much work, like so many hours of work are behind that picture <laughs> and behind this picture here. So this is like literally a portable seed library. Um, we bring it to our CD Saturday. We'll bring it this year. We brought it last year. Um, so it's an easy, you know, it's available all year round, but the CD Saturday is a way to really promote it and to show how easy it is to uh, borrow, grow, and return seeds. Um, we actually launched another um, seed library. In uh, That's another picture of all the seeds. We got a lot of donations from Hope Seeds. We bought a little bit. We had a little bit of a budget through um, the Roots to Table uh, funding. Um, it wasn't directly associated with the seed library, but it was part of our funding. So we just used it to buy some seeds to, to start the seed library. Um, and we also went out to Dope Town nearby. So that's, oh, that's another, that's just a kind of a close up of, uh, that's just a close up of what seeds are available at the seed library. So a wide range, everything from, flowers to food to the herbs yeah it's uh it's really good it's it's not super popular yet but um it's getting there and again with the cd saturday it's a way of showing people how easy it is to grow seeds to save them so the workshops were always a big component of establishing a seed library and uh this is our very first where is he now that's our very first seed library borrower <laughs> he's actually a chef and a grower himself. He works at Mount St. Joseph Nursing Home. And uh, his name is Owen. And he said, you have to take my picture. And you can see the card that he's holding in that little basket there. As what is the seed library? Stephanie Hughes gave us like, well, we actually bought them out of the same grant money that we had for Fruits to Table. Uh, just a big stack of French and English little cards. What is the seed library? Where you can buy um, uh, local organic non-GMO seeds. A lot of education in this little card. So um, that was another instrumental piece that Acorn provided for us. Not free of charge, but not very expensive either. And then we started doing uh, different workshops around the region to uh, promote the seed libraries and to start really early promotion. This is in the fall, the late fall of uh, the CD Saturday. Um, so this is Bob Lipset, who's no longer in Miramichi, unfortunately. He, we lost him to Montreal. But uh, we did a workshop on seed saving in the fall, and he showed up and said, I have a donation for your next seed library, wherever it ends up being. Um, he also is a uh, ugly gourd grower. <laughs> so he has these, uh, he calls them lucky lady gourds. And they're, as he describes, very ugly and warty. He wanted to share those seeds, and he wanted to leave a little bit of a legacy in the machine, so that's why he did that. So. I don't think they're ugly. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. There's a picture of them here. I think they're beautiful. But um, so Bob was uh, really helpful. He so we brought his uh, case or that you know the the little tools uh, thing that he sent, he donated there. We brought it to Dope Town because Belva on the left there wanted to establish a seed library there as well. So she's out. Of, like I said, she's about an hour away. So Blackville and Dope Town are very close to each other. So they started saving seeds in the fall. Um, they wanted to host their own CD Sunday. 
And so that was us winnowing some of the seeds that they had available. A lot of flowers, a little bit of food, but mostly flowers. Um, and they work with their local school. So they uh, opened a seed library uh, just after Chatham did. So that's their seed library. There's Bob's uh, <laughs> donation at work. And we did a workshop there in the late fall um, and a little bit of a seed swap. So we re really started like from the um, perspective of we needed to share what this is before we could expect people to come do seed swaps and that sort of thing. Um, so from this point after Doaktown, I started um, doing workshops on seed saving, um, seed starting workshops. We did one in Escanobanage, First Nation. And the gentleman on the, the far right here, Andrew Martin, oh my gosh, he's amazing. So he really, he actually took all this seed starting workshop and uh, opened a community garden, started a community garden with it. So they didn't do a CD Saturday, but um, it was just part of the education piece that we started to, to broaden out across the county and let people know that there would be CD Saturdays starting soon. Um, that's part of the, the, uh, the seeds at work in Escanobage with Dolores and her class. That's what seeds do. They, they, you know, they start new things. So this was a CD Sunday at Blackville Resource Center. So it was after, a week after the Miramichi one, but it was a lot smaller. So I, that's why I decided to start here. Um, so they, like they said, they had a kid friendly activity. It's a, it was a very small scale thing. They just, they just planted some seeds and shared, did a seed swap and had a very small scale, but it was very successful as well. Like um, it's a small community. I think there's about 4,000 people there. So, you know, there's about a dozen people out. And uh, so I consider that a success for the first year. They're planning another one this year. That's just where it was held. But uh, that's uh, Jessica Bowie and Belva and Joy, who's at the, the Resource Center. So that was their first CD Sunday. You can see they brought the whole entire catalog of seeds with them. So that's another nice thing about us having a, a seed library first and using that as the education piece at an event because all the education kind of comes with the library. The library is more than happy to kind of share that they have it at their 20, you know, their library throughout the year. So that was really successful for us. And it didn't cost us anything, which is nice. And then we did our CD Saturday in Mirchi. So leading up to this, like I said, we had all these other workshops and education pieces. We also, um, a key part of our success at this event was the Miramichi Garden Club. So they are a very popular garden club in Miramichi. Um, and they started advertising this like a month before with uh, a lot of, um, just at their meetings and uh, on Facebook, we had a radio ad, we did this poster, which we shared and printed and uh, sent to every newsletter and every, <laughs> any media outlet we could think of in Miramichi to uh, let people know what's happening. And the date was really late. It was April 14th. And this year we're actually planning it in February in about a month from now, exactly a month from now. And like um, Tatum, we're also planning a snow date. So Luckily in April, we didn't have to worry about snow date. The weather was good. Everybody came out. It was great, but it was a little too late in the year to think about starting seeds. Most people had already started them or um, it just didn't, uh, yeah, it just didn't, it was too late in the year, but we thought we needed to do one. And even if it was last minute, it was, you know, just to kind of test the waters. But because it was so successful, we said, yeah, we're doing it again. We did provide food. The Miramichi Garden Club provided all the food. Um, the coffee, the tea, the door prizes. Uh, we had a lot of the, I think we had six different companies. They're not all listed there, but uh, all those companies, seed companies are returning this year, uh, plus a couple more. Um, we had local growers there as well. And this year we have Ashley, Laura Rinesborough will be there at our CD Saturday, <laughs> as well as um, Stephanie Hughes, who I, like I said, was really, she's from Acorn and she was really instrumental and helping us launch our seed library. So um, yeah, it was a really, it was a really good day. It flowed really well. We had more, that's Jessica Bowie. So we started off with, again, with the seed libraries and um, just introducing the day. Everything was in the same room. It was at our um, a donated venue at Sovereign Community Church, which is a big, fairly big church hall. We had all the vendors and um, display people kind of around the room. And then we had a, like a, 
an area where you see Jessica so we could do the workshops and presentations right from there in the same room. But the food was in a separate area. And the food was mostly finger food, uh, fruits and vegetables, things you could just walk around and eat and, and hopefully buy seeds from our vendors. Um, our seed swap table, not very, <laughs> it doesn't look nearly as organized as Tatum's was, <laughs> but it did work. Um, we had, uh, all it, we had a, a, a box, I, you can see it here, there's a box of, uh, they're just little paper envelopes. So we had bags of seeds that were labeled and dated and that sort of thing. And then when people wanted some, we would just write, somebody would man the table and just write on it. And Because a lot of people didn't want a whole package of seeds. It was kind of odd, actually. I thought I'd be just giving out so much, but um, people said, no, I could rather have just a few. You know, I don't want to take them all. And we're like, no, take them all. We got lots, but they're, they, they never wanted a full package. So we had a way to kind of give a, a few to the people that wanted that. And the seed catalog from the Chatham Public Library was there as well, just to, to say, you know, that's what they have available there anytime people wanted to go. Um, what else happened that day? My goodness, so much. Matt did a great presentation on starting seeds. So Matt is our community garden coordinator with Roots to Table. Um, and he's actually organizing the whole shot this year. He did send me a list of what's happening. He um, has uh, the same kind of people back. And like I said, uh, there's also the Newcastle Public Library will be there because they have a new tool library. So there's garden tools as well as other tools. So they want to highlight that. Uh, the Chatham Public Library is coming back with more of a seed library. There are more of the whole seed library collection again. And um, yeah, I think that's it. We have a couple more farmers this year. This is actually another opportunity for um, our community. We have a new community garden in Miramichi. So this was a great event for them to, to uh, highlight that you can sign up for their community garden space. This plot's right here. We had two, we'll have two community gardens represented this year. So they're um, small but mighty, this community garden space. They started off with just this in this empty space right beside the Water Street Market. And they are um, already getting all their plots kind of full already this year. So that's really exciting for them. I'm really happy that they, it went so well. This is the, one of the presenters that's just showing the room and the setup of uh, how we did our workshops. Like I said, we had all seats in the middle and the, the vendors kind of around the room. And it worked fairly well. There was, there was a lot of space for everybody to, to go with. So that's one of the vendors and just all the seeds they had available. <laughs> and that's just Athena. I just had to include her because she's so cute. She was so cute then. So she's running around now, but that's actually Matt's daughter. He's the community garden coordinator's daughter. So she's like our unofficial Roots to Table mascot. She had to be there. So I think I will, if I have time, how am I doing for time, Laura? Doing good? Okay. So I think I'll just share um, something else here. So I just wanted you to have a sense of the room. Oh, I'm not finding it now. Oh, I guess it's not there. So I was going to show a quick video of what the room looks like. Maybe I'll have to, I'm going to just stop the share and see if I can find it here for you. Michelle, I can pull that up if you'd like. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, that'd be great. Thank okay. you. So, um, unless there's anything else you wanted to add as your official presentation? Uh, no, it's not, it's not quite over anyway, so I still have the, um, oh, right. the presentation. So why yeah. don't you share my screen? Yeah. I'll pull that up. So Michelle just wanted to share some of the live Facebook video that they did of their event. Oh, we're seeing all my notifications. How exciting. Probably going to be really loud. So we're up on meetings, so people don't feel bad. Hi, Michelle, <laughs> Mabel, we're here at Miramichi's first CD Saturday. Very excited. Lots of people here. Here, I'll flip over so you can see them. Jessica Dewey, our new food security coordinator. She's, uh, Lots of people out. We're planning to come out. They wanted to have some great workshops. 
Thank you. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm just going to, okay, so I go back to share, just finish off the, Does it work? Yeah, there we go. So yeah, like I said, it was very successful. We estimated that picture didn't show really the busiest time and which is fine, but uh, we estimated we had over 200 people. Um, at one time, we had definitely that room was full. Every seat was full. There were people milling around the whole place. It was it was awesome. There were people out in the hall. So I think this year we're actually going to expand out to there's three or four rooms out in the hall that we can use as well. So I think we might do it like Tatum did, where we have workshops in another room just to kind of clear a little bit more space around the vendors. We have more vendors this year too. So we haven't actually figured out all the logistics of that where we're putting everybody, but. Uh, it's a great space and like I said, we get it for free. So the, since the CD Saturdays, we also, um, we just kind of continued that work of growing our knowledge about seed saving and seed growing. Um, so we did, we continued with our workshops. Jessica Bowie was really great at uh, kind of uh, highlighting um, some of the, just a, you know, basic tips to kind of keep your seeds alive, keep them, you know, let them grow into plants kind of thing which I'm really still very bad at, but, and Matt, uh, our community garden coordinator, um, did uh, a workshop at Natalie Wagene, uh, kind of like a CD Saturday there on a very small scale. Um, so he's, a, a, he grows, he's a market gardener, uh, and he's our community garden coordinator, so lots of knowledge there. He's uh, doing a, uh, a no-till, um, He's presenting that at the CD Saturday, which is a, uh, a way to grow without tilling your soil. So um, it's a booklet that he's uh, produced and he'll be sharing with us. This is just a great picture showing how happy some people are with seeds. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's almost the end. Oh, that's one of the workshops as well. So little quick tips and just some of the seeds at work in some of our community gardens. And yeah, so that's about it. Um, I think I covered everything I wanted to cover um, with, uh, like I said, I talked about the food. Yeah. And oh, also Maple Farms was really uh, great. One of our vendors, he wasn't actually able to come out, but he sent us tons of seeds to, to give out and Maple's of quite a small outfit in Southern New Brunswick. So it was important for us to, um, to highlight uh, our local producers and local growers as much possible so um we try to uh, we're trying to increase that year over year and uh yeah so we're looking forward to another successful year february 16th in miramichi with a snow date of february 20th excellent great okay thank you so much michelle it's great to see all those photos to really get a good look at how it played out last year i want to give a quick peek at some of the resources that I mentioned earlier. Um, sometimes I think it helps if you actually kind of see what it's like. So from Seeds of Diversity Canada, here's their handbook for organizing a CD Saturday. Um, <clears throat> lots of great advice in there and tips to go through. Um, there is also the Community Seed Network, as I mentioned, that ACORN is part of and membership is free. Um, you can list your CD Saturday events um, on the Seeds of Diversity Canada website. Um, and what else did I want to make sure to share? Uh, yes, that ACORN also has, through the Community Seed Network, how to organize a seed swap. So this brings me to those top three pieces of advice that Judy Newman from Seeds of Diversity Canada would say is crucial to a CD Saturday. And even though all of this can be done, uh, we've seen two amazing examples from Foods of the Fundy Valley and Roots to Table, um, that here's the advice. One, keep it low cost or free admission. Two, uh, don't conflict with other dates in the province. So now you know what Miramichi and uh, Albert County are doing and when they're hosting them. And third, have a good seed exchange. That's a seed swap idea. Um, but the rest is extra. So I think that's, that's some pretty key advice that um, we don't need to, to, to pack it all in if that's beyond our capacity. Um, that just making sure that there's a good seed swap and there's a chance for people to 
gather, convene around seeds. Um, I think that alone um, will spur a lot of conversation and a lot of good networking and connections. Um, it's also just great at this time of year that there's an opportunity for us to get excited about the growing season. Um, that alone can do wonders for our mental health. So um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to some questions. And I know that there's already been one question posed through the chat. I encourage more to come through. Um, so to Tatum and to Michelle, um, how many volunteers help to coordinate these events? And with that, I also want to ask about staff power. I know you both did have part-time um, staffing to support with this, so it would be helpful to better understand just how much organizing um, and how many people uh, were behind these events. Because, I mean, really, what you've achieved with a, with a CD Saturday is, is quite impressive. Okay, well, I can answer first. So we have, I work part-time for Foods of the Funny Valley and I'm the only employee. And then, so I was obviously the lead on organizing. And then, as I mentioned, Angela, who's on the board of Foods of the Funny Valley was the other lead. And then we probably had three other members of Foods of the Funny Valley who helped out. So one mainly took over the super, organizing all the food, and then two others that helped set up and take down and, make sure everything ran smoothly on the day of. But I I basically contacted me, most of the people for the catalogs and seeds swap table and getting seeds organized. And then uh, Angela did a lot of getting the vendors. So we kind of split that work up separately and then everything else we kind of did together. So we did definitely did not keep track of our hours. So I don't, <laughs> don't know how long we spent organizing it, but you no. Know, it definitely takes some time, especially just making sure you can get the catalogs and the seeds and everything else. So unfortunately I can't give you an hour, an hour estimate, but uh, you know, like a few days worth if you jammed it all in together for sure. Yeah, and for us, um, I did most of the organizing last year's, for last year's event in conjunction with um there was two people from the miramichi garden club that they like they they uh created the poster and they organized all the food and they um organized really a lot of the promotion the word to mouth or whatever you call it uh, promotion um and yeah i mostly focused on and and even uh, organized some of the presenters to come out i organized half of them and they, they organized the other half so during the day of the event though we I had that my part-time staff uh, food security coordinate, coordinator Jessica so she worked normally works two days a week and um, so she um, did that she was there for that event and she also hosted the black bill event completely on her own <laughs> um, Belva was there but um, she did all Belva, uh, Jessica did all the planning for that event so that was a very small event but it really only took one person to organize it um, for the, the Miramichi one, I'm guessing it was uh, the day of, there was about five of us again to set up and put down. Um, but the vendors kind of came with their own tables and came with their own setups and for the most part. So we didn't have to worry about that. It was just, uh, and the, um, Joe Wash at the sovereign community church was there on hand to help us set up and to put down as well. So we didn't even need that many people. It was actually a little bit too many people at the beginning, <laughs> you know, because some of us were standing around with nothing to do. So, um, yeah, just during the event itself, there was two of us and myself that just kind of kept things going. But, yeah, and the, before the, I wouldn't know how to estimate the hours either, Tatum, because, yeah, I'm sure it was a lot. <laughs> I'm sure I didn't get paid for almost all of them, but that was okay because uh, most of us were just happy to do it, to bring that kind of event to Mirror Machine. So. Yeah, and the other small or very small ones in Escanobidage and uh, Natawaganeg is one one person. So that's excellent. Thank you both. Um, and so there's time for another question. I will. Uh, are there questions from any of the participants?
always good to leave time for an uncomfortable pause, just in case. Um, so I'll jump in with a question. Um, I've got I've got a burning question. Um, it was so interesting to hear about um, how um, partnerships worked out, um, and I think especially with promotion, you know, being able to sort of piggyback on the uh, existing communication channels of a garden club, for example, um, and yet uh, entirely possible to. Uh, pull off an event without partnerships. So uh, Michelle and Tatum, I wonder if you can kind of reflect on that a bit, like what role did or did not partnerships play um, in being able to pull together your event last year? And are you changing anything about that for this year? So we didn't have- I I'll start to answer that. Um, oh, go ahead, Tatum. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we didn't have, too many partnerships, so we did work a little bit with Acorn. Just, I guess our main partnerships were with advertising. So we reached out to uh, groups that we thought were in line with the CD Saturday and asked them to spread the word. But otherwise, I guess we wouldn't have too many partnerships, but obviously they're very important and we would have liked to have more because you know they can reach their network of people and get them excited to come and you know spread the word out to more people. So this year we're hoping to reach out to some more, especially like environmentally type groups and nature groups and maybe get more kids involved because I didn't really see a lot of, we didn't have a lot of kids attend. So we're thinking maybe having like a little kids activity at some point throughout the day to get more kids involved too. So uh, yeah, so I guess we would like more partnerships, but you know sometimes it happens and sometimes like acorn we just they just couldn't the date didn't work out for them to come and have a table or anything so uh, but maybe next maybe this year we'll get some some more but definitely it's important yeah i agree I, like our our um our partnership it wouldn't have happened without our partnerships like not to that degree not to that degree it's funny because of those smaller communities it really was very volunteer led, very community led, happened very organically. Um, um, but there wasn't a lot of people there, but the ones where it was very kind of, it was still community led, but uh, like I said, the Miramichi Garden Club, just uh, they were um, they were instrumental, I think, in the success because they, they've got a regular meeting that they have every, every month where they have food and they have door prizes. So it was kind of like all, almost, I think their entire membership came out and it's probably about 50 people. So, you know, that was half of the, the people that, well, no less, about a quarter of the people that showed up. But, but we had people from Bathurst, we had people from Moncton, like we had people from all over the province, which was really nice. So I agree with Tatum too, in, uh, with the kids, that was one thing that we want to add this year is to have a couple of tables for kids activities. Uh, we did have a number of kids running around, um, but, you know, other than, you know, seeds are not really the most fascinating thing for kids. So um, we were thinking of doing a, like a seed mosaic, making a seed mosaic, having a design and they can glue seeds on there or um, trying to guess what seeds belong to what fruit, kind of like a mix match game. And the community gardens actually are planning to do an, a, at least one activity for kids. And then the roots table is going to do another one. So. Um, yeah, but we're not changing much. We're just adding a couple more partners and um, the food is going to be a little bit less like we had so much food left over last year. <laughs> so we're, uh, we're thinking that we'll, uh, we'll downscale the food. We didn't need as much. So that's about it. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, this has been uh, really interesting to hear some of the nuts and bolts. Um, and um, I, uh, I'm, I'm quite fascinated. I look forward to attending um, and am very excited that you continue to host CD Saturday events. Um, for anybody else interested in hosting one, um, please do let the New Brunswick Food Security Action Network know. Um, and also I wanna put a plug in that we will be hosting more webinars um, this coming winter and spring. Um, and so stay tuned, you can sign up for our newsletter and that's a great way to find out about um, what other webinars and events are coming up. Um, there was one last question coming in about who the vendors were. So um, that was covered a little bit. So I'm gonna put a, 
a pause on the recording so that we can um, end the official webinar here. Well, we can stay, if the presenters can stay online for another couple minutes, then that will give us a chance to answer that question. So I'd like to formally thank our two presenters, Tatum Andrews and Michelle Davison Legier, for these great presentations, for letting us in on your process and your events. Um, and uh, thanks also to everybody who has participated or is watching online.